Welcome to Association Chat, produced by Amplified Growth and Human Factor, talking about all things association, nonprofit, and anything else that pops into my mom's head. And now, here is your host, Kiki Latalian. Ooh, you can do this, Mom. I love it. That is moral support coming from my one and only. I love hearing her voice every week. It's so amazing. Everyone does. I know. It's so exciting. It's It hearkens new and wonderful things. You just said hearkens. <laughs> <laughs> I did. That was awesome. I did. That was awesome. I get bonus points for that, I feel. Talk to the people. Introduce this show. Let me tell you. So it is a rainy, cold day in D.C. today, but but it is a beautiful, warm, inviting environment right now for associations because Why? it's another association chat. And today we have a very special guest. Um, I want to share some warmth before we get started with our lovely sponsors. I want to say thank you to Human Factor. Yes, yes. Amplified growth, of course, you know. And Human Workplaces. Thank you for sponsoring. It is so beautiful. It is beautiful. Yes. Um, There are several things that um, we have to be excited about today. We have a giveaway that oh, that's I'm going right. to announce during the give. No, no, no. This is during, no, I'm not, I'm not during our yet. discussion. Yes. Uh, we have another guest after our, our main feature guest today. Yes. Um, by, back by popular demand. Back by popular demand. We also have um, a sh- an announcement. I'm going to be at Great Ideas doing some cool stuff, and we have an announcement about that. So without further ado, you guys have so much to look forward to. I want to talk to you about our special guest today. Yes, who is uh, We're talking about how the power of AI can work as a tool to boost existing products and services. Whoa. And asking, can it help us to reimagine the membership experience? Can it? Okay, so we're going to talk about this with my special guest. His name is Ron Moen, and he is the CIO at Chest. Yes, Chest. So hi, Ron. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kiki. Yeah, yes. yeah. A, a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, super fun. I love the um, – I'm glad you weren't recording when I was dancing. Oh, but to yeah, the, you're the giving music. us a little bit of a replay yeah. anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my mind was blown about the possibilities, so thank you for oh, not running man. the camera yeah, on my camera. Welcome. Yes. All right. Yeah. So very fun. Thank you. Glad to be here. Psyched. Um, Watched the show before. It's a blast. I always learn something. So, you know, I know you and I are going to have fun. And if someone learns something, hey, that's good too, right? So I wanted to jump right in. You know, we had the best conversation before, um, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, getting prepared for this. And one of the things you talked to me about was you brought up this conference that you were going to go to in New York. And so I just wanted to follow up with you to find out how to go. I mean, this was a data conference talking about data and money, right? Money? Mm-hmm. Right. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Data money. The, the conference is by a consulting group called Outsell. Essentially, they're a micro Gartner. But if you, if you know what the Gartner group is, uh-huh. you know what Outsell group is. They, they're a much smaller boutique firm. But they run a conference every year in February called Data Money. And it's really all about how do we leverage the data around us? And, and, you know, I think when we were talking last week before I went to the conference, I was focusing a little bit on the licensing. And, but the reality of it is it's about mm-hmm. leveraging the data. And sometimes one of the ways you leverage it is licensing it, right? I mean, associations have been selling mailing labels since before they were 501c3s, right? Um, but it really is a conference all about how to leverage the data that's around us. Um, for the good of our whatever it is, right? And so big companies like ADP and Amazon and Google are there and tiny little startups with three employees are there. And it's it's about 400 people. So it's a small footprint conference, kind of like yeah. Great Ideas used to be. Um, it's, it's great. It's, I love uh, it. Yeah. Well, you know, I was really interested when you told me that you were going to be going there because it wasn't just for association executives. And it was really looking, and, and that's kind of exciting stuff when you're when you're breaking out to see what is everyone else talking about, what is the latest, most cutting edge information happening, and do you find that you get a lot from going to conferences like that? Yeah, I do because they talk about, and again, none of it, like so many conferences, when you're really excited, you think about, it, you're like, okay, so the mantra for the conference was, trust is the new algorithm. 
Okay, well, that's not new to associations. We know that trust is one of our major yeah. value propositions, right? So that wasn't the only takeaway, but it really frames this idea that everyone is concerned with trust-based value. Um, and so one of the things that they, they talked about at the conference was we're really not focusing enough in our industries about looking at existing workflows, existing things we already do today, and then seeing new possibilities for data. So I'm sitting in the session and the guy is giving some examples from what happens in, in his company. And I'm thinking about, we look at recency, accuracy, and completeness of data. So how recently was it updated? Is it accurate and correct? And then how complete is it? What are the fill rates, right? So there are people on our team who work with board governance and with faculty and with um, people submitting for grants, right? Those are kind of three common association things that happen. They see a ton mm -hmm. of CVs, right? Because these volunteers are all sending in their CV as a credibility card for whatever they're applying, right? There's a ton of data in there that is probably more recent and accurate than the last time I sent out a survey saying, will you tell me about <laughs> right. yourself, right? So how are we at Chess thinking about how to sluice off the workflow to get access to the data we already mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. in order to increase recency, accuracy, and completeness? So being at a conference where I'm surrounded by people who are all thinking about data monetization lets me stop and come up with like, oh my gosh, this is not that hard. To, you know, it's it's just stepping away, like any good conference, right? Whether it's Digital Now or Great Ideas or, you know, when you can just sit and think and go, huh, that's not exactly what I do, but here's how I could do that or here's yeah. the, how that would I mean, matter. I think that it's, it's such an exciting time to be someone who is who is curious and open to experimentation with, you know, the ways that we use data or try, even in creating products or services, you know, this is a time when we have so right. many different ways to get feedback and information that if you approach it in a structured way and have a creative mindset, it, it's, it's really enthralling. It's, it's exciting for people. Well, and the, and the possibilities to connect the data and the platforms are there today in a way that, you know, maybe five, six years ago when we talked about these ideas, we had the ideas, but it was too hard to think about. So like, I'm going to go to a conference where Kiki's a mm -hmm. keynote speaker, and I can't wait to hear what Kiki has to say. Kiki's also right. got a book, right? So the conference organizer ought to be giving me a coupon to buy your yes. book on Amazon. That is a no, Amazon does that in their sleep today. <laughs> right. That was hard, right? right. 10 years ago. Um, Proximity-based advertising. I was in a, so the cool thing about this conference, everything's 20 minutes long. Doesn't matter whether the CEO of a Fortune 100 company is the speaker or a data scientist from some little mole rat company you've never yeah. heard of. Everybody's yeah, I get, can I minutes. hear an amen, folks? I wish I could hear you out yeah. in yeah. association chat land. An amen for that. Yeah. 20 minutes long. So you know that if you if if you're the speaker, you better make that 20 minutes great. But if you're if you're in the crowd, how bad could it be? I mean, like 20 minutes, right? And if and if right. Ron is terrible, go yep. take a call and you'll be back in 20 minutes and no big deal. Or check some yeah. email, right? You can, anyone can survive 20 yes. minutes in a conference room. It's hard yes. to survive an hour, right? Um, but anyway, I'm sitting listening to this uh, guy talk about how he's partnering with Gas Buddy. If you don't know what Gas Buddy is, so Same partnering with Gas Buddy and they're doing proximity based advertising. And so we had a visitor here today who's a potential vendor partner of ours and they were talking about the digital experience. And I said, well, how about we work with nav ads and do proximity based advertising so if i'm a conference attendee and i'm walking from the sheraton the seven blocks to the conference center i'm going to get different ads than you're going to get kiki because you're coming yes. from the marriott and so how about going to those businesses and saying i'm going to have 1200 people staying at the hotel they're all going to walk right by you on the way to the conference center let's make it easier for those constituents to engage with you let's make it easier for you to get them to walk in the door and that proximity-based advertising is possible today in a way that it was, you know, we had to blanket everybody's yeah. citywide advertising, right? So um, those are the kind of examples of things I get to think about when I'm sitting at a conference that's called Data Money. It's, I'm spoiled. It really <laughs> so is you cool. come back and, you know, the work that you've done, I, I, I have to say that the um, email that went out to subscribers to our mailing list from associationchat.com 
um, that was talking about you coming on today. I know. Um, Barris, that was not, um, your but PR people are you, awesome. But they, but. Um, I mean, all of us were really excited. It's not, I don't think that there was that, there wasn't much of a stretch. We didn't have to do much because you've done a lot. Your team, you and your team have done a lot with Chest. And there's a reason why it's known for being an organization that's as innovative as it is. So can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, some of the, your mindset, I guess, and some of the work that goes into leading a team where you have a, you know, you've, you've raised the bar and you have this expectation that you're going to remain cutting edge, that you're going to remain innovative. What goes into that? Yeah. So I apologize a lot to people I work with because I make them <laughs> crazy with my, I, I have ideation as you know, right. And so, um, I don't know if you remember from the old day, the Myers-Briggs profile. So you can go and read in the book. And in my profile, it says, apologize to the people you work with regularly. <laughs> you probably make I was them an, crazy. Or I was an IMTB uh, or something. It's, it's remember true. that, Kiki? I, you know what? I was an, I don't think people would expect this, but I was an INTJ. I went straight down the middle. Really? Yeah. So huh. I'm either a crazy introvert or a, or a, um, I've seen you in, I've seen you in crowds though. Yeah. And as, as outspoken as you are, um, on air in crowds, you're, you're really not super, you know, if, out especially there. It's a boring extroverted. party. What are you, Ron? I'm an ENTP. So it's, um, yeah, you can read it, but, but anyway, so I do apologize to the team a lot, but we do have a team that's willing to try and we love the pilot and the proof of concept. And, and I say this to our board all the time. I say, you've got to thank my team because we have physicians who want to fax. Like we're wow. still supporting a ton wow. of facts. You think it's all mobile. Yeah. It's not all mobile. There is volumes mm -hmm. of facts and we've got to be PCI compliant. And so when, when you say we've raised the bar, we've stretched the bar because we've still got to do old school in addition to new school. But um, I do have a team that's willing to pilot and willing to try things. And, and we have a culture that says, we can risk a little bit of mm -hmm. money to learn. We can risk a little bit of money to explore a new concept. We could, we're not putting $300,000 at risk. We're putting $30,000 at risk. And for $30,000, if we learn something and decide what not to do or what's to decide to do better, then that's a good use of 30000 Even if the what we create or develop has a six-month shelf life or a one-year shelf life, obviously, you know, we want it all to work, but it doesn't all work. It, um, it doesn't, wow. it doesn't yeah. all work. Yeah, and you know, so that makes you a great person to invite to any fail fest that we've seen it. Did uh, you say uh, fail, fail fest? Fail fest, yeah, it's ASAE fail fest. Tech, and they, they have them in different places, and I love this concept. The idea is this, is that you share some of the fails, some of the things that huh. – are not on your highlight reel so that other people can learn from them. And that, and I think there's also sort of a therapeutic quality to it where it's like, we're able to be human and share what we've learned. Right. Fail fest, huh? Yeah. Fail fest. So I won't submit this one. I'll tell you a quick Ooh. fail fest story. So we hired a company and we like them and we'll probably use them again, but we hired a company to do some augmented intelligence analysis mm -hmm. of our content. And what our premise was is that no matter how smart Kiki and Ron are, they can't tag the content fast enough. There's just no way. We chest publishes mm -hmm. way too much content. So we thought, well, let's set these smart old computers at the content tagging. So we did some work with the computers and trained the AI to go look at tagging. And then we said, okay, so let's take all of our 2017 content from our annual meeting, which is already all digitized, PDF, videos, whatever. We let the computer read the transcript, watch the video, absor absorb the PDFs, and then come back with us with what were the most prevalent content areas at the 2017 annual meeting? And if those uh, reports back from the AI passed muster, we'd be like, okay, maybe we could pilot this going forward, like in some live, okay? So um, we got the report back and the number one topic, <laughs> drum roll. Oh, we have to the, have that. Yeah, oh, yeah. ding, the, okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. The number wait, one, wait the forward. number one content talked about at the chess 2017 annual meeting was disclosures, disclosures. <laughs> right because the computer didn't know that slide number two in all 475 presentations at the annual meeting is no! the disclosures of the faculty no <laughs> yeah so disclosures was the oh. number one thing mentioned in all 475 sessions at the annual meeting yes. in 2017 the computer was so pleased 
to present this uh, data. And you're like, wow, that's a whole lot of womp, 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 womp. Yeah. And, yeah. and the thing that we tease the vendor about mercilessly is that obviously no human <laughs> looked at the amazing insights from oh, the artificial intelligence. Yes. Oh, that brings that actually brings to mind the fact that uh, and I teased this. Thank you. I appreciate that. You teed that up you really ready? well for me. Um, no, but this this mailer that went out, you know, I asked the question, what does the what does uh, Ron's team, what does Ron and Ron's team think is the A in AI? Because this came up, right? This came up after uh, the mailer went out. So the A in AI. Yes. So this and, is the question? Yes, because Lara on my team and I, we saw um, Ron's response to this. And he said, you know, my team's going to laugh when they see what, uh, what, the what this title yeah, is, okay. because it, we talk about artificial intelligence. Yeah, I thought it was artificial. I thought that was pretty well established. What is it, Ron? Uh-oh. It's augmented and intelligence. Yes, and why? Because we are still fighting yeah, for the role of the human. I love it. You know? I loved that the response. human one matters. The human yes. one matters. But, you know, some of that is a little bit of sensitivity to our industry, right? I mean, healthcare professionals and healthcare providers, whether they're doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, whatever, mm-hmm. I mean, they matter. And so we can have the most amazing AI insights in the world, reading images, um, looking for cancer, analyzing blood. But at the end of the day, not many of us are going to be treated right. by a robot yet, right? So we, we use the term augmented intelligence sort of to honor the role of the human in the healthcare system. Um, but yeah, so when, you're, when your grandma's brag book about the guest you had said we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence, I, I was like, oh, well. I love that, though. Okay. No, it was, it was a great response because that's somebody who's put a lot of thought into it. And I thought, yeah, augmented intelligence. I prefer that, actually. And, and I hadn't heard that, but I love it. I the love humans it. Humans don't matter. Well, and the fail, and the fail is such a great yeah. example of that, right? The artificial intelligence was really well trained on our chest content. We do believe that it understood how to watch the videos, absorb the PD. Like we believe that it did a good job, but we missed telling them to remove slide two and the computer wasn't smart enough to go, hey, you know what? This slide two is a title slide type, you know, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, wow. it's, um, I look for things that prove my point. So that proves <laughs> my point, right? The exceptions make the world better. I have three kids. I always need I things love, that right. prove my you point, You know, right? and, and that really is it. You have to provide, you have to qualify, you have to provide, you know, what? support for your- For the kids? Yes, you do. Hurry up and talk, mom. You need to get home and take me to dance class. Yeah. <laughs> See? That is so true. <laughs> it's Speaking true. about that money. That is true. Yeah. She actually comes in uh, and gets out of here to everybody right afterwards. And you go it to is true. Class, she correct? has hip hop class tonight. And correct. She always needs yes. more money. I always have to leave right more money. More money. I have that queued up for you and everything. We I want more money. It's Margo. <laughs> it yeah, more money. So let's talk about money. So uh, what about buying and selling data? I mean, for associations, this has been, um, and it's an interesting, touchy, it's a t- well, touchy to say the least. Yes, absolutely. You know, I think, I think that's right. I think if we were only using data to sell mm-hmm. more lists, right, or to, to sell more complete lists or we're, the way we leverage data is not just handing it over to some vendor partner to use, right? We're, we want to be about the insights. So if you are um, a medical device company or you're a pharma company, you have medical advisors on your staff, right? You've got probably some of the best key opinion leaders. You're paying them a sweet retainer to give you good advice and give you, right? But that group of medical advisors is small. And so if you're a device company or pharma company and you want insights from, let's say, 500 pulmonologists who are all at this level in their career, who live in the Southeast because that's where the healthcare issue is that you're trying to tackle, we can help you get insights from those people. Now, we're not selling them a list of the names for them to go do what they want. We're partnering with them because, again, the trust is the factor, right? We're the trusted broker. So we're reaching out to that cohort saying, hey, pharma company X is interested in your feedback on these issues because we're all trying to crush lung disease, whether you're a pharma company or you're a device company or you're a doctor or you're a nurse. If you're in the lung health space, you're about crushing lung disease and helping cure sleep apnea and um, dealing with critical care issues because usually when you're in the ER, breathing is a problem, right? So um, the way we leverage the data is by helping make those and broker those connections, again, not just by selling lists, 
and we want to license data or bring data in to have a more complete picture of our ecosystem. So the government will tell you that there's 80,000 doctors prescribing medications mm -hmm. for people with lung disease. But if I look in my net forum, I don't have 80,000 physicians right. in there, right? So there's a disconnect between the people that I know in my funnel and the people that the government says are prescribing medications mm -hmm. for people with lung disease. So I need to go out and find that other data and feed the top of my funnel. And so a lot of the concepts from data money, it's not about, you know, how to make more money selling the names of your constituents, because that's not it's a trust-based trust value, value, right? That's not innovative. And I feel, I feel like people start right. and stop right. there. And there's so much more right. that we can do. Right, 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 right. right. And so how we can, we, we know, we know at Chess that if people are in the funnel, mm -hmm. if we know who you are, we're pretty good at getting you the right content. Right. We're working harder on right content, right time, right length. I mean, we're still but we want to feed the top of the funnel better because we know from the government that there are more physicians prescribing medications in lung disease than we have in net form. And I got to bridge that gap. And the the AI or the machine, really technically the ML, the machine learning, right, that's possible out there helps me ingest more of that data okay. into the top Oh, of the perfect. You ingest. are the perfect guest because- It's a segue. Isn't that a great segue? Okay, if you are watching this right now and you want to find out how Ron is going to feed that funnel using coming? machine learning- This yes, is a tease, right? Then you hold Stay on tuned. right now. Stay tuned. We're going to come right back. But first, a word from our sponsor. Welcome to- Culture tip number four. Next, work on transparency. So if you start with agility, the next area to focus on may be transparency because interestingly enough, these two markers in our culture assessment are statistically correlated so far. In most cases, we find that organizations are more focused on individuals sharing information with each other, but they haven't put as much effort into building the systems and processes to support information flow, particularly across silo lines. That was Culture Tips brought to you by humanworkplaces.net. Guys, for sticking with us through this um, because it's an amazing conversation we're we're having with Ron Moen and Ron, you said that how, how do we feed that funnel? You're talking about machine learning, helping to feed the funnel so that you're getting the information and completing the data so that um, you have more data, better data, you know, and let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, part of it, it goes back to, I said this at the beginning of the show, right? Recency, accuracy, and completeness. And it's a really old saying, right? Mm -hmm. Garbage in, garbage out. So that applies probably even more so in the machine learning and augmented intelligence um, than when just humans were looking at it. But so we try and find better data from existing workflows at chest. We license data from other places to try and to try and feed the funnel. And then we're also working on some programs to scrape the public internet. So um, especially again, because we're in healthcare, if uh, Kiki's a physician in local suburb mm -hmm. of Columbia where I work and you're a pediatrician and I'm looking for a pediatrician in my area and I go to the Northwestern Memorial hospital page and I do the find a physician and I have a daughter, so I want a woman and I find you, your CV is there for me to read as a, as a potential consumer. I'm not logged in yet. I'm not a customer yet. You're not my daughter's um, doctor, right? But your CV is there. So if your CV is there for me to read as a, as a potential um, mm -hmm. customer of yours, your CV is there for the computer yeah. to read. Hmm. So I'm working on algorithms that will go scrape the internet and find CVs of physicians and feed our database to update the recency, accuracy, and completeness. And the physician might say, wait a minute, that's my CV. I'm like, no, 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 you know, actually it's not your CV because Northwestern has opted you in right. to put it on the public internet. I'm not breaking not into a hospital system. You're not doing anything that's not available to anyone else if they were looking for the same specific type of information. Yes. I love yeah. that so yeah. much. And yeah. right now, 
Um, I have a friend who isn't feeling so well today, and she said that you're her tech crush. Tech I think crush. we should have Tech Crush Tuesday for association chat. But tech um, crush. oh a, yeah, I didn't know we had those. Thing. No, actually, Ron has a lot of a lot of people out there in his Tech Crush community. Really? Yes. Yes. Is that true, Ron? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the numbers decrease drastically when you come work for me. So it's like the nightmare is real when you have to sit with my ideas all day and go, "Come on, there's just yeah." Great. This is great um, music, by the way, Blake. The I love crush. this. Yes, tech, the crush, tech music. crush. No, but it's you can see why though, because yes. this is where you start to. And I'm not talking about the beard, right, Ron? I'm we have that about... question coming up later yeah. about the beard, right? Yeah, we're gonna crowdsource that. You want to crowdsource? That... The... We can do it right now if you want. We'll it was a discussion on. before we went live. Should the beard? So beard the question be... is. To the people in. watching, what is it? What the should it be reined in or not? Yeah, does it need to be trimmed? Yeah. So you got to tell the story, right? You're gonna, you're gonna ask why I'm even asking. So I had dinner last night with a yes. potential vendor partner, and they're, they're a longtime partner of Chest, but haven't worked with us in IT. And um, the person told me that it was time to trim the beard in. It was getting so a little unwieldy. Show will know. So. Will know. Yes, and. Sure. It- I said my wife loves it, so it's not going anywhere. <laughs> what if your What if your tech groupie likes it or whatever it is? Your tech crush. We'll yeah, have to we talk might, to, you know, you know we'll, what, you guys, uh, you can type in to the comments if you're watching live right now, what you think. Do you think that more is better? Or do you think that we should, should do this easy rein top. that beard in, you know? Go easy top. Yeah. Um, actually, that does remind me there is a giveaway that I need to talk about. Oh, because is, right? one of the things that, uh, one of the many things that Ron and I talked about when we were getting ready for this discussion was about StrengthsFinder. And it was really interesting to find out about, you know, your five strengths. I shared my five strengths. I actually... This uh, was given to me by my friend Kevin uh, while he worked with uh, 360 Live Media. They sent me this with their partners in Lime stuff uh, when I talked about Strengths Finder online. And so we compared notes, didn't we, Ron? Yes. yes. Yeah, we use we use strengths based uh-huh. culture here at Chest and especially on my team. And that's part of the part of the reason I do that is so that people understand that we all have strengths and we all bring something to the table. And a lot of times. My madness is just my madness, but I want to honor them and I don't want them to be like me. They have strengths that I don't have. And so um, it's it's really important that we honor each other for our strengths and build a team around what's possible. Um, because if we had only Kiki's mm-hmm. or only Ron's or only Tories or whatever, it's not going to work, right? We got to look at a team and say, wow, we're missing people that have these type of attributes. Let's go find someone again, find someone who we trust, find someone we know. Let's find someone to add to our collective because we can get more done when we've got a fully functioning team. And so what I, um, what I shared as the giveaway, sorry, (laughs) what I shared as the giveaway is that if you're watching live now and you've commented with your top five, what's your top five strengths on strengths finder. If they match up, if three of the five match up with Ron's, what happens? You win an association chat hoodie. A hoodie? A hoodie. I don't even yes. have a hoodie. I know. I know. But but Blake. I'm typing it in. Where's where do I do this? Well, you can't play. You can't play, but everybody else can. If you're watching right now, you can type it into YouTube really quickly. Um, and if you type this into the Facebook Facebook chat. Uh, you can do that as well. I already posted it there in the in the association chat uh, Facebook group, private Facebook group. So Kiki, I'll I'll um I'll up it too. If someone has the yes. same five as me, I'll send them a oh, strengths mug. My friend Joey mentioned strengths, strengths, finder strengths, finder mug. strengths finder mugs. I don't have oh, one to show. Wow. Now I feel like, but I'll send if someone has all five of like mine. I'll send them a strengths mug, mug from. I got okay, mugs. Guys. Maybe I'll send a mug too. Okay, guys. Three mugs and a hoodie. So have you had a chance to type it in? Type it in. By the way, we're getting Mark saying more beard. Stacy's saying, personally, I prefer beards that are more closely trimmed. But who am I to tell someone what they should do with yeah, their face? Put them on. Let's put them back on. There uh, it is. And Anne says, I think it looks appropriate. So we have, so we have it's kind of three. Uh, what's our score? I have a scoreboard here if you want to put it up. <laughs> we can try that. Home visitors, what it says right By now. By the way, Reed says, ask the great Kikini. And we might have to do that. She is coming oh. into the studio uh, in just a little bit. Wow. Right. So we have uh, two that say more beard. So wait, I think it looks th- appropriate. That will be the home. Two for more and visitor will be because I didn't set this up. And one time. says and one says uh, that, would be one. that they two prefer to... that beards are more closely two trimmed. Two to one. I'm keeping track. 
Yes. I think that's I think that's more in. I think the closely trimmed is kind of the in look, but I'm <laughs> I've never been very good with in. This space is built for radio, so you're so great you know, though. You know we're gonna have to do this again. What are people out there it's asking? Um, well, right now they are typing the in. They're comments, sharing. There's beard comments. <laughs> Um, and we have people who've shared that they have Woo, Strategic, and Communication over on Facebook. We have Significance, Harmony, Deliberative, Consistency, and Achiever. Oh, I want oh. that person on my team. Send me your resume. Liz, whoever that was. Liz, this is you. Okay. Go on, Liz. And uh, Brian says Individualization, Restorative, uh, Analytical, and Election, and Communication. Hmm. Yeah. Those are good ones too. Yeah, some of your resume, right. Brian. Those are so, good. Although Gallup doesn't want you to Gallup does I should say Gallup does not want us to hire and screen based on strengths. It's really uh, counterintuitive. But they, you know, my friend, if Joni was listening, maybe Joni is listening. She's going, no, don't do that. That's I'm so confused. You, you look at the people around you and you pull from their strengths. You don't go hire based on strengths. So Joni, if you're listening, I'm really sorry. But so for I can't people help it. who are keeping track and watching out there right now, what are your top five? So I have um, Includer, mm -hmm. Ideation, Positivity, okay. Maximizer, and, and Woo. Woo. Okay, you guys, if you have three, three of those on your top five, then you just won yourself an association chat hoodie. Woo! <laughs> and Strengths Finder, right? And a, and a mug, Human Factor mug. Strengths Finder. Yeah. And if you have five of five, I'll send you a Strengths Finder five, mug. Five of five, you get a Strengths Finder mug from hey, Ron. Brooke, All right. I want to go back to what he was saying. Look at that. Music. Let's talk about it. So that that hiring thing, that was kind of interesting, I thought. So what did you say exactly? You don't hire? Yeah. So um, Strengths Finder is about the way we approach problems and challenges. And it's kind of, if you go back to your roots, you know, that movie, mm -hmm. The Hunt for Red October? You know, at the end of the day, they were looking for something that made seismic anomaly, right, which was the whale sounds. So um, Gallup doesn't want us to screen people saying, oh, we're looking for someone who has an election or we're looking for someone because them having that strength has nothing to do with their ability mm -hmm. to do the job. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with their skills. It doesn't really have to do with their temperament. It doesn't have to do with their cultural fit. Right. So you really need to hire for all of those things. And then you look at the people around you that you've decided have the right skills, the right cultural fit, the right curiosity, the right aptitude. And then you say, I'm putting a project team together for X. And how do I draw people in together and use them? As opposed to putting up a screen that says, I got to have better sales, which means I need more woo. Wow. Which is not woo. The case. More money? More woo. Is, is money woo? Woo is winning, winning others over. over. So it's the part of <laughs> me that makes people feel yeah, you'd be so good in sales. Of, no, I wouldn't. I'm I don't have competition. I have no desire for you to buy anything on a timeline that is wow. set by someone else. Huh. Yeah. We want more money. <laughs> yeah, more money. Well, I, I do. Yeah, money is margin. Oh or my God. Money is mission. So, by money. the way, I, I just have to bring in some of our online comments. Uh, guys, I love these comments. Keep them coming. Uh, Rich says, I want the beard, but oh, my shoot. wife says no. My wife says no. So what no. was that at four? That was a four? I'm I think that's a, it. that's just a Home ther is therapeutic. Let me share. I wish I, I wish I'm putting that in, I'm putting uh, I could have one. Um, and, uh, yeah. So we also have augmented beard. Oh, is that four? What from dot org community. Ooh. Yes. Well, I. For my birthday, I am going to get extensions so that I can make a goat tail. So I am going to get well, extensions. That so goes, a goat tail. That go, that goes with our friend Mark Lowry, who says, what are you hiding in that beard? Oh, maybe that's, I think that's an against yeah, then, yeah. isn't it? My higher logic tattoo, but I don't want to scare people. <laughs> I really am. And then, and then uh, Layla says, tell Ron I'll mail him a dollar to trim his beard. Oh, and another, says, we're tied. yeah, so there's, uh, there's. Please trim. And then there is, why have I never done this strengths finder? Oh my gosh. Yes. Please. And then Amy says, no beard. So gang. So gang. She didn't mean gay, did she? Oh, gangster no. is probably what no, she meant. No, she didn't mean. I don't know. What so gang? Is that a thing? I don't are know. Are the kids saying that now? <laughs> All the kids. All yeah. the tech kids are saying it. So gang. So she's going to say in a second. Yeah, she's. So right. who do we have winning right now? Is uh, it, right now, it's actually it was tied, I think, uh, three to three. Three to three. 
Let's I love see. this. We've never used the game board before. Right, and I so should set it up. Free. I could set it up properly while you guys are yapping. Talk right. about something. Let me set this up right. <laughs> she said, sorry, yeah. gang. <laughs> so no beard, sorry, hey. gang. She says, no beard. All right, talk amongst yourselves. I'll set this scoreboard up right. Okay. Fantastic. Um, so just to, can I say two more things Please, about the strengths yes. conference? I mean, about the strengths conference. About data money. Yeah, data money. I'm looking at my brain. Data money. Up. Yeah, about the data money. So one of the things that um, that was interesting to me was that PBS, and in Chicago, it's WTTW, Channel 11. I love PBS. My kids love PBS has more people consuming content on digital devices than over the airwaves. I believe that. If you add up cable TV plus free TV, and then you look at all their digital platforms, more consumers and more content huh, on digital crazy. platforms from wow. PBS. With NPR, it's obvious, right? I mean, NPR is one of the leaders in, but, and I was just, I, wow. In the last 12 years, since PBS decided to create its digital strategy, um, they have, and so I'm like, wow, that, that says something. Cause if sleepy old PBS is doing that, you know, our associations are, we got to be paying attention yeah, to this. We really do. Yeah, um, I know. You really should talk so, with Layla. Layla, you, um, she's done some interesting, I think Layla, you've done some stuff with PBS, right? So you probably have some insight into that. Um, yeah, that's so interesting. The other thing, one of the speakers I went to was talking about how we just need to look in our environment around us, our whatever business we're in, right? And look around us and look, what are the things that are so maddening? And so he was challenging us to say, why is it that if you go and you take your child to mm -hmm. urgent care or to the ER, it's the same exact experience as Amen. it was 25 years ago, except you're watching TV and you might have an iPad to sign in, but you're still in queue. You mm -hmm. still don't know how long. It's still too long. Well, you, you know, I mean, it's, it's it just, is ridiculous. I think that especially now we look at we look at all of the the ways that we're able to control things like that. And uh, my dad just uh, came back from another trip to Mayo and he shared with me how, you know, insurance covers the same amount, whether he goes there or goes to his local uh, health care system. And the, the process is vastly different, that there he can go and see specialists and have nine different tests lined up. And while he's walking from one place to the other, right on schedule, there's no wait, there's no time, yep. it runs like clockwork. Yep. And uh, it's, it's actually for what it is. I mean, if you're going to have to do this stuff, it's a relatively enjoyable right experience because even if you get lost on the way they have people just along the way right. waiting to guide you to where you need to go everybody is on the same page that's pretty cool it really is that's so our our current board president is from mayo and it's unbelievable the how far ahead they are of the rest of the world but the guy the speaker was just saying there's things around you that are driving either your customers or your partners or your staff crazy and a lot of times if you step back and you think how can i bring AI, ML, or NLP, national language, how can I bring some new tech to an old problem? And if you, you know, you won't solve it. It's not a light switch, but you can get started. And that was another, again, reaffirming to things we're I already doing. I love this. But, so I, yeah. I hate to do this. We have another guest that's coming into the studio, but, but Ron, you have to promise me that you're going to come back on because this was not only super enjoyable, super informative, but there are so many other things we have to talk about. Yeah. Well, you can come and do it at Chess. We'll have a remote. We just built our new multimedia studio. Ooh. So we'll sit in our studio at Chess and do our, uh, we'll do a, a remote. It'll be a lot I'm of fun. fun. Yeah, totally. All right. Thank you so much. Everybody, Thank you. stick with Appreciate us. It. What did you think about Ron? Was that not amazing? absolutely amazing so i want amazing. you to type in and share one of your takeaways we have somebody else that is in back by the popular studio demand. back by popular demand we received letter after letter question after question question after question our mail room was overflowing Cause, yes cause we people still get still mail send letters. they still send letters <laughs> <laughs> should we just get to her let's we go bring to her, her. yeah All right, let's bring her comes. on in yes Great Kikini. Hi, yes. Hello. Welcome back. 
It's good to be back, Blake. Welcome back to the to, to the DC area and association chat. Oh, I feel so much energy around me. Yes, Blake. Well, we get lots of emails from people that wanted to have you back all the time. Oh, and that's so nice to hear. Did you get the check from, uh, was it Matt or Fran? I did. Kikini with an I. Kikini with an I. Mm-hmm. So, uh, obviously, as usual, you know what is we're about to ask you, but um, the listeners won't. And I don't. You, what we're talking about is um, seeing things on everything from job boards to, uh, to, yes. to descriptions and things like that. So. Oh, Blake, the, it's the the spiritual realm for associations has been speaking, and I was just rubbing my crystals together the other day, hearing the elect the electric, the energetic power behind people wanting to be hired. And I can feel they're distraught, Blake. They're distraught. They're distraught. I understand. I understand. So we're going to help some of them today with the so terms. So much you, confusion. So can you, let's just start out with one. Are you ready? I am. Fast-paced environment. Yes, fast-paced environment. We, we... We cannot look at the words fast-paced environment without understanding what they're really saying, Blake. They are saying this. They are saying, go, tell. We are overwhelmed. We are overworked. And you'll be afflicted with this curse called a vocation while the board keeps piling it on. (laughs) I see. Fast-paced environment. Beware. Wise words. Okay. We have a few more. One person here said um, they saw the words, lots of opportunity. (laughs) (laughs) You've heard this one. (laughs) Ah, Blake, we all have. Why, even in my great position. Lots of opportunity. Even in my great position, lots of opportunity sounds a lot like a lot of exposure if you're a musician. Oh, yeah, you can die of exposure. You can, and... Lots of opportunity. Well, that's just another word for it literally could not get any worse, Blake. Oh. Literally could not get any worse. Yeah, I could see opportunity. that. Opportunity. Yes. I could see that. How about uh, do, uh, maybe two more? I have room for two more. Wonderful. Let's mm. see here. I'll pick um, other duties as requested. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes, other duties as requested. Oh, poor child. That means there is no janitor. You'll be taking out your own trash. Ha ha, yes. And since we received a capital grant for new carpeting, you'll also need to move your own furniture by the way, can you make cookies for the board? Ha ha ha! And are you done with that grant yet? Man, that's a lot of work. Uh, you just saved somebody a lot of time. A lot of time. The association's spiritual realm is full of indecision and confusion, but we have answers. The answers are here. I see, I see. There's one more I think we should do, because you can probably... You're, you're, you're technically self-employed. Yes. All right, well, if you saw this... Freelancer. If you saw this, what would you think? Mm. Out-of-pocket expenses incurred will be reimbursed. Oh, this one's a dangerous one. I see. Everyone should be careful. Oh, out-of-pocket expenses incurred will be reimbursed. Ah, if you are looking at this right now, if this one touches your soul, people, I want you to dig in really deep and ask yourself, how much do you really want to pay? Because what they're really saying... Yes, tell me, tell me. We have no approved budget for the line item of parking, mileage, postage, or approved meeting meals... You're on your own, kid. You're on your own. That's what they're saying. (laughs) Well, I am glad you've come and cleared a lot of these up for the association world. We have tons more. We have tons more. 
but we will save it for your next visit. I know your time's very valuable. My time's up. The Time spiritual up. realm has spoken. Are you ready to depart? Ah, uh, here I go, Blake, into the ether. Into the ether you go? <sighs> Goodbye, Great Kikini. Well, that was a thing. Oh my gosh. Every time she comes in, it's amazing. It's there there's the smell of incense in the air. The spiritual Smoke fog. Is spiritual fog. Yeah. That's what Association it is. spiritual fog. Hey, so check it out. I got the well th this is where I left off on the Oh, that's not it. What um, were Yeah, what was the final so score? Beard, I have beard, no beard. 4 against 3 to 3. Now, of course, Ron's gone, but but what was it? 3-3. So 3-3? Three, three. Three, three? Yeah, but I tie? felt like there was more people commenting than that. Oh, my gosh. We need a tiebreaker. I know. Someone quick. We have a 20-second delay, too. If anybody's watching right now, please type in. Get a picture of Ron Beard, on your no there. beard. Beard, no beard. Yeah, this will be like, you'll be the tiebreaker. You will be. And again, you will this takes about 20 difference. seconds from when we say it to go live. <laughs> so we just got to sit here Stacey's now. Stacey's saying, Kikini is like if Zoltar was a woman and busted out of that glass box. That's right. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> All right, Kikini so we, is free. The scoreboard's up. I got the button ready to push. I know. Three to three. Okay. So, guys, well, you want what to do, do you your think? wrap up stuff really beard, quick. No beard. So thanks for coming out. All that Thanks stuff. for coming out. I, I'm so thankful for everybody who participated. Thanks to our sponsors, and that is Human Factor. Doing podcasts for associations. There you go. Amplify growth, all kinds of consulting, digital strategy, yes. and human workplaces. Human workplaces. Making workplaces. More culturally inviting. Yes. Workplaces. Yes. Yes. So, uh, and we have a vote for no beard. Thank there you. We go. Adrian breaks the vote, breaks the tiebreaker. No beard wins. No so beard. So it, sorry, at the very friend. least, we're reining well, it's not, it in. It's not no beard. It's yes. not no beard. It's just reining it in. Control that is what we're saying. Get that thing under control. Get that thing under control. If you guys love this, share it with your friends. Share it with your colleagues. Next week, we have Dave Delaney coming on. Dave Delaney, let me tell you, he is going to make over our LinkedIn pages. Live on Live, yeah. live, guys. And if you go to mine. Uh, Blake really needs a lot of help. And so if you've ever had any questions about how to up your game, level up in your professional online Not in presence, your video games, in your, own, your professional level. That's up. right. That's right. That's a different, a different episode. Paula can tell you about that. Then check this out, because next week we're going to do makeovers live uh, on LinkedIn, and we're going to start with Blake. There's yeah. just so much to do there. Oh, no. <laughs> And if you are going to Great Ideas, turns out I am too. I'm going to be there with Association Chat. And also, I have a big announcement that I'm going to be making there on site. And I'm really? not saying anything about it till I am there. So watch for an announcement live from Colorado Springs uh, about a new offering okay. from Association Chat. New offering. I know, it's mysterious. Do you know about this? You don't know about this. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you so much for joining us today. Share, like, love, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Association Chat, produced by Amplified Growth and Human Factor. For more information on Amplified Growth, go to AmplifiedGrowth.net. And for more information on making podcasts for your association, go to Human Factor at HumanFactor.net. To hear past episodes, go to the Association Chat YouTube channel and subscribe. See you soon.